I'm Bob Emser, and I'm a sculptor boat builder. I was just uh, checking out the manual that uh, came with the boat and uh, looking at uh, how it described where the orlock risers needed to be positioned on the boat. So the manual uh, shows very clearly uh, where the orlock risers should be located. Uh, in this case, um, it should be uh, 13 and 7 eighths, I'm sorry, 13 and 5 eighths from uh, the uh, center frame back. Um, a rule of thumb that's usually followed is wherever the edge of the seat fa falls here, you would go back uh, one foot from the center of the, where the oar lock would be to the front of the seat. Now, uh, this uh, um, kit came with one, with one pair of uh, oar lock risers, like this is one of them. And it says in here that uh, in addition to these two, when you would be sitting in the center to row, that if you had a passenger that was sitting in the back seat here, you would need to have an additional set of uh, oar locks uh, in the front here so that then you would sit in the bow of the, of the boat with your passenger in the back to help to balance out the load. Um, so since it only came with one pair of these, uh, the first order of business is to uh, make a, another pair of them. Um, fortunately, I had uh, some um, nice mahogany uh, scrap laying around, so that's what we're gonna use to uh, mill those out. The original pieces were cut at a 15 degree angle. So that's what I started doing on the table saw. Uh, then cut the pieces in half and uh, use the original pieces then to uh, lay out the curvature of them on, a, on the blank stock. Then brought it over to the bandsaw and cut these pieces out. After I got them cut out, I then uh, cleaned them up and sanded the uh, new the bandsaw cut and got all of those uh, riffle marks out of there. They're about six and a quarter uh, long, so I measured the center, found the center of it, and uh, I pre-drilled a three-quarter of an inch hole in here so that I had a nice straight uh, pull through it using the drill press. I then uh, epoxy glued them to the boat and let them dry overnight. Used a follow block uh, underneath the uh, oar locks so that when I drilled the hole through the in whales that uh, I was able to use the, that they wouldn't split out on the bottom and I was able to use the, uh, the block that I had already pre-drilled as a, a guide so that I went through at a good, strong 90 degree angle. So one of the issues I have after I've gotten these um, Orlock blocks uh, glued on there and my holes drilled is that <clears throat> the uh, plate that they supplied it sticks up about a quarter of an inch which doesn't look bad when you put the oar lock in there then you can see that underneath here there's not enough room for the um, a pin to put in there so these this could pop out unless you're able to anchor that so my solution is to cut and mortise out a little bit of this for that uh, piece to fit down in there. And how I'm gonna do that <clears throat> is take a small saw like this. And get it started. And 
and then uh, the pencil, measure the thickness of this and make a mark. Uh, that mark now will tell me how deep I need to make those saw cuts. We can finish that up a little bit. Yeah, it's pretty good. And then simply uh, chisel this out. Well, it fits. It fits pretty good. Let's move it off a little bit with a rasp. Whenever you're cutting with a rasp, you cut one direction and then the other direction, sort of cross half it. It'll cut, it cuts faster. And then the Smoother side, finish it off. See how that fits. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks great. Nice and flush. Cool. All right. Do three more and we'll be done. Then we can put some varnish on this. All right, uh, now tomorrow we will uh, start to put the leather collars on the oars. Uh, today we're going to sew the leather collars on the oars. Um, I uh, purchased these oars mainly in the interest of time. <clears throat> They're made out of uh, spruce and I was having a difficulty sourcing spruce and I had never built a pair of oars before. So I elected to, to purchase my first pair. Uh, hopefully, in the future, I uh, would like to build a pair because I think it would be a fun project. Um, <clears throat> so determine what length of oar you need for your boat. <clears throat> it's basically determined by the distance between the two oar locks. And in the case of this boat, it's 54 inches. And that would mean that we need about a six foot, or I'm sorry, seven foot six oar. Um, that would give you enough, uh, the distance between where the leathers go uh, and out to the boat and into the handles um, is a very uh, particular formula that uh, I know that the Shaw and Tenley, the famous ore makers, have been using this formula since the mid 1800s. Um, seemed a little complicated to me, um, but basically uh, I just looked on a chart said 54 inches, seven foot six. So we'll uh, get started and... Uh, so the next thing we wanna do is to put the leather collars on the oar and we need the blade up so that where we put the, uh, the stitching of it would always be on the upside uh, when you're rowing. Uh, so to determine where the leather goes, I measured the distance between the two oar locks, which was <clears throat> uh, 52 inches 
And so you divide that in half, so it'll be 26 inches. So from the handle over, plus 2 inches would make it 28 inches. So I'll make a mark there at 28. And then to determine half the distance of my leather, which is 9 inches, which is <coughs> four and a half. Now we take and line up those two marks and wrap the leather around. <coughs> Make a small mark where that co covers and put one on both ends. In some cases, if the ore is tapered, which I don't believe this one is, you'd want to make sure that you're cutting the taper. It actually does look like it might be a little bit. Let's see. It's five and three quarters. It's about an eighth of an inch difference, so. All right. <clears throat> now the next thing, we want to cut this. And understand you need to cut it about an eighth of an inch shy. Like so. a good sharp knife. All right. <clears throat> Next thing on the back side, I'm going to mark this top towards the handle. And come in about a quarter of an inch, like so, on both sides. And <clears throat> use a Sharpie pen to give myself a little bit of mark and about every quarter of an inch, or actually every three-eighths of an inch. Okay, <clears throat> I've got those marked. Take an awl and punch all those. While I was uh, punching them out, I did both leathers while I had those tools out and uh, had that operation going. I then used uh, some tape to um, help hold the pieces on in place uh, while I was uh, getting ready to sew them. Uh, this helped immensely uh, to have them held on there. Um, I then started uh, with um, some uh, thread and needle. Uh, both The thread is a, a um, upholstery material and it was doubled up and I put two uh, needles on it so that I would be able to, to stitch one way and then the other way with the other one. Uh, the stitching pattern on this is essentially uh, the basic baseball stitch um, where you go under and then over and then under and over. Uh, it's a little bit like uh, lacing a pair of shoes. Uh, as I went, I of course took the tape off and uh, moved along um, as I uh, moved up the, up the handle. I also put the tape back on uh, occasionally to help uh, hold, especially on the end. Um, and uh, once I got to the end, I tied it off. Going through a second time. Gives it a little more strength. And also, it helps pull the leathers 
closer together, a little tighter. All right. Pretty happy with that. The next thing is to put the uh, button on there, which goes around the top like so. So what I'm going to do is cut a scarf joint for that. that and mark it at the top and at the bottom. All right, so I've got a nice little scarf cut there so that that can go together like so. All right. So uh, <clears throat> put a little bit of glue on here. Should try test it fit it first. All right. So let's slide this under there. Put a little bit of glue on there. Lined up. I've got a couple of little brass nails. I'm gonna put a little, punch that a little bit, get it started. So I'm pretty happy with the way they uh, turned out my first attempt to uh, sewing leather. Um, anyway, uh, next episode we will be installing the floorboards and the uh, seat, final seat assembly. Um, so that should be good. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to be launching the boat. So I'm pretty excited about that to see how uh, the boat rows and uh, how, how it handles. Uh, and also, you know, testing out these oars. Um, so uh, stay tuned for that. Um, also, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of the new Patreon uh, subscribers. I really appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't yet uh, subscribed to the channel, please do that. Uh, like the video. Uh, and uh, if you haven't seen Patreon, check out that page. And if you feel like you could give me a couple of bucks to help uh, completing some of these videos, that would really be great. So, uh, so until uh, next episode, thanks for watching.